All right, so I'm going to be showing how to replace and upgrade the SSD on this HP NV desktop PC. This is model TE01-5364. All right, so first thing we're going to need is this uh, T15. All right, so this is a Torx screwdriver bit. All right, if you don't have a Torx, you can also use a larger flathead screwdriver to open this. All right, so let's go ahead and turn it over. Actually, let's get like some thumbnails or something because I think this is the side most people will be familiar with or this side maybe. Okay, anyways, so there we go. Let's go ahead and open this up. So there's the one black screw here. We're going to undo that one. All right, once you do that, this screw actually stays in place. We're going to go in here. I'm going to use my knuckles to kind of push while I pull here or you can just hold this down with something. But anyways, just go like that. Pull that and then you can lift it out all right so inside we have this stuff all in the way we're going to use the same screwdriver to undo this screw okay we actually need to remove the front panel um, this screw actually comes out okay so we're gonna have to remove the front panel so the front panel has these three tabs here okay and we're gonna have to remove those so let's get a thumbnail there all right so three tabs what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift up slightly be careful not to pull too hard you don't want to break the plastic just lift and pull it forward slightly okay it should just pop forward like that once you pop it forward you can see this comes out you might have to actually lift this thing slightly to get it in uh, because it does have like these little things that kind of catch on the bottom here Okay, so we'll set that aside, but this is what it looks like. All right, it looks like on some models, they actually have an option for a CD drive, but this one doesn't. It's completely closed off, as you can see. All right, so we'll set that aside. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove this metal cage here and also the hard drive box. So there's actually another screw in here that we need to remove. As you can see, there's one here, so we're going to remove that screw as well. All right, there's also a wireless antenna, the wireless antennas here and here. Okay, if you needed to remove those for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, I don't see why anyone would remove those unless they broke and you need to replace them. All right, so there's actually a little thing that catches here. Let me see if I can show you this. All right, so I don't know if you can see this little piece. It sticks out just barely. So if you try and pull this, you see how it's stuck. All right. So what you got to do is you actually have to pull it over in this direction and up. So pull it over that way and up. You might have to, let's see, why isn't it going? So pull that outwards and then up. Come on, let go. Or you just got to pull harder. <laughs> okay, so there you go. It came out. Let's see if you just lift harder. So I think um, what you got to do is you have to hold down this side and then lift up. So you're basically bowing it in like this okay yeah so that works so if you just pull up like this you can see it doesn't work you have to hold this side down so you can bow it and then that way when it curves in this way it pulls it away from that piece now we can carefully lift this up and then slide that out you can see it has three tabs that hold it there so we'll set that aside all right the hard drive this is a um, hard drive caddy this can fit a two and a half inch um, SATA hard drive it looks like or a full three and a half inch SATA hard drive. Um, you got these connectors here. We're gonna have to get these out. So you gotta pull this tab slightly back and then slide them over this way. This metal actually just bends, it seems like. So once you put the things back in, you have to bend it back, but hopefully this won't snap off. Um, if you do it too many times, I'll probably end up breaking off. All right, anyways, now we should be able to lift this. Okay, so this one lifts up this way and then um, it seems like it has tabs there too. All right, three tabs that go in that way. We'll set that aside. And now you can see the, how am I going to show this? There's the M.2 SSD, M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD. All right, if you're going to replace this and your OS is on there, keep in mind that you are going to have to migrate the OS over either by cloning your SSD to the new one or by doing a clean install. All right, so I'm assuming it's gonna be using a PH1 JS1 screwdriver. Let's see. All right, yep. All right, so you wanna to switch to a PH1 JS1 and then undo that screw. And you can see now it pops up like that. Once it pops up, you can go ahead and wiggle and pull it out. So this is just an M.2 PCIe NVMe. It's, uh, this is a one terabyte. I don't know what brand this is, but 
Um, I don't know. It's made by, oh, Kyo Kyosia, Kyosia or something. I don't know, Kyoxia. All right, anyways, we're going to go ahead and swap the SSD out. We have a Crucial P3 4 terabyte SSD. The customer was more focused on the storage capacity than anything. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. Um, I did clone the SSD, um, but my cloning software, like, it went to sleep. So I don't know, like, when I went to go like click finish um, and close it, it was like frozen. So hopefully the clone went okay. If not, I'm gonna have to do the clone again. Um, and if that's the case, I'll clone it while this is in here and then clone the opposite direction now. All right, so there we go. If you're wondering, um, there is a GPU replaceable here. Um, the one thing though with the replacement GPU is it needs to have enough power um, it looks like there's only one. I believe this is an 8-pin. Yep, that's an 8-pin PCIe connector there. Okay, so if you are replacing that, you need to keep in mind it only has enough power for so much. All right, there's the screw here. Also, it doesn't use a standard um, power supply, so you can't just swap a normal power supply into here. All right, after you undo that screw, you can lift this slightly and pull it sideways. Okay, so basically pulling it that way. And then now we have access to this. There's a little clip here that you need to push down. I don't know if you can see that, but it's spring-loaded. So you push on that while you pull that out. Let me see if I can show you this. Okay, oh, I don't know if I can get a right angle, but basically you push down that clippy thing, and then you kind of wiggle this, wiggle. Okay, it's gonna be a little tricky. Okay, oh, I guess it's easier to pull that side a little, then pull this side, then pull this side. Okay, so basically you're wiggling it like that. And there we go, that's the GPU. Um, what is this? They don't say the actual RTX model. I don't know why Nvidia doesn't do that anymore. Like they don't say, oh, this is an RTX 20, like 4080 or I don't know, whatever numbers they are now, 50 something now. Um, but it doesn't say. So anyways, I just wanted to pull that out so you can kind of see what's underneath. <clears throat> this is the power supply. The power supply, they included the labels upside down, uh, but it's 320 watts max. Okay, so there's only a 320 watt power supply again. Keep in mind if you're replacing the GPU with something else that it can support that. All right. And they have this connector that goes straight from the power supply, so it has even a special connector to the motherboard. <clears throat> All right, so you can see the motherboard power connection is strange. And then the, um, sorry, I don't know if you can see that. There's too many things. It's too hard to angle it. But there's the four pin uh, CPU power that's normally a CPU power, and then it has the second one. So some motherboards they use an eight pin. Um, all right, you got a fan connected right there for the back case fan, and then the CPU fan connection is up there. Excuse me. Actually, hmm, I don't know what's what because there's another four pin connection here as well. Um, there's a lot of glare on it, but let me see. That says power. Oh, that is. So the white one is the CPU, the black one is SATA power. So this actually just plugs to the motherboard to give it the. Oh, here you can see SATA power connection. So that's interesting. Instead of coming from the motherboard, it comes from the, I mean, instead of coming from the power supply, it comes from the motherboard. And it looks like there's another PCI, PCIe uh, power connection here. So actually you can use a video card that uses um, two 8-pin connections. Um, and I think that's all that comes out of the power supply. It's the motherboard one the two PCIe and then the uh, CP two CPU four pins. All right, there's also the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery here. The wireless card is up there. Um, <clears throat> I'll show you guys the RAM in a bit. CPU obviously is underneath the heat sink there. Um, I'm not sure what this chip is for. I don't know what the chip and schematics and all that stuff is, but if you need to remove the power supply and replace it, there's four screws on the back. And then there's this spring-loaded uh, piece here. Oops, let me see here. So this spring-loaded piece here, you have to push this down when you slide that back in case somebody needs that in the future, but I don't know who's gonna need that for quite some time. Um, anyways, there are some jumpers down there. Those, if you see these blue ones there, the blue ones, 
So it looks like there's a clear CMOS password and CMOS. Um, I don't know where you would move the jumpers to, but those pins, those six pins do something with the uh, CMOS and password. I think, hmm, P-E-T-S. I don't know what P-E-T-S is. I'm assuming the, <clears throat> the first one, the one on top, is the CMOS BIOS. And then the one underneath it, because they're going horizontal, these two pins here, and then these two pins here. I think the one below is for to clear the password. So I think if you pull the jumper out, it'll clear the BIOS and or clear the password, whichever you're doing. So yeah, keep that in mind. If for some reason these jumpers are missing, then I guess the BIOS will always just keep resetting itself. I don't know. So make sure you don't lose that. There's a SATA cable here as well, connected to the motherboard. So it's ready for adding a SATA hard drive if you wanted to or SSD. All right, so the RAM here, we're just gonna pull one stick. You see it has these white tabs. You just push them outwards and that pops the stick up and then you can grab it and you can pull it out. And this is a, does it say? 16 gig PC4 3200 AA stick of RAM. So yeah, I don't know if they make 32 gig sticks, but I believe this is probably two 16 gigs, so it probably has 32 gigs total. Okay, so we'll go ahead and drop that in, and we're just gonna push it straight down. Okay, just like that. All right, so now we got the two sticks of RAM. Make sure they're back in, and I think that's it. There's a PCIe, like full size, and then this small one. I don't know what they call those. Um, I forget but it's like X something or whatever. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and put the GPU back in here. So you just line it up. It's going to be tricky, but make sure. Okay, get that out of the way. Line this up. Make sure that the um, thing goes in the slot properly. All right, it's hard to do this while trying to hold it to show to record. But get that in. Come on, get in there. Yeah, it's hard to do this while trying to hold it at a proper angle for you guys to see what's going on. But uh, basically, just line everything up. Okay, make sure it's going in the right spot here. Good. Okay, and then once you got it all lined up and pushed over towards the back, you can push this in, or you should be able to. Goodness, there we go. Okay, and then the back here, you wanna make sure that these line up. You can see it's kind of weird. So you wanna make sure that this lines up right. Okay, you can see how it lines up with the holes there. That's what you want. Then you can go ahead and click that back over. We'll get this screw back in. Okay, then we'll go ahead and get the power cable back in as well. Make sure you get this on the right side. Hmm, they don't make this easy to know which side it goes on because you see here, it has this P5 here. If you don't know, you might twist this around and then try and stick it on the wrong side here. All right, I'm pretty sure it goes on the other side, so. Keep that in mind. You need to make sure it goes on the right side. Okay. Like normally they off center the little clip here so you know which side to put it in, but in this case they don't. So if you were to plug this in the wrong one, let me see here. Would it be possible to plug it in the wrong one? Okay, no. So if you look at this, it has like the rounded top, rounded top, and then the square. So if you look at this, it's rounded top, rounded top, square, and then the other one. So you need to make sure to put it the right way. And like I said, it does go seem to go on the bottom so that it'll show the P5 there. And then when you flip it, it shows the P5 on the other side as well. Okay, so just get that back in there. Click that in, all right. That's good, all right, let's go ahead and reassemble this thing. We did a lot more than we needed to. So first thing, we're gonna get the hard drive um, 
hard drive slash SSD 3.5 slash 2.5 inch caddy. So again, you get those three in, then lower this down. Again, if you want, you can go ahead and put these cables back in there. Um, it's not really necessary, but yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and get this back in. So the SATA connectors, I don't remember exactly how they were holding it. So it might, it'll probably put it back in a little bit different than before. All right, but basically clip that in there. And I don't think the SATA one was clipped in there, right? It was just these. So there we go. We got that and that. Now we're gonna go ahead and put in the screw on the front that was holding that caddy in place. Make sure it's lined up. Oh. Okay, I guess you have to hold it down while you're doing this. It's a little tricky. All right, hold it down. And then screw that in, there we go. Perfect, all right. Then we got the black one here. Get those three into place. Okay, then lower that down. Make sure this clicks in. Then we'll get this screw. All right, don't forget the front panel here. So the front panel, you have to kind of lift this up slightly to make it easier. So I don't know if you can see, there's a little tab here, 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 and here. So those need to go into the little tabs there, okay? So you get that in. Okay, hold it at an angle. It helps to kind of make sure that this part goes flush down here first, okay? If it's not, then it's not lining up right. So I don't know if you can see this side doesn't want to go in, right? So make sure get that in first. Okay. Now that this is all flush here, you can go ahead and click this all back in. All right. So now that we got all of that clicked in, you also want to look at the front, make sure all the USB ports are lined up, right? Looks good. Okay, and last but not least, let's put the cover back on and we're good to go. So get that back on, slide that back in, and then tighten up that black screw. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. Um, I also have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More, which is pretty much the same with just my review videos. Um, I'm hopefully going to separate my review videos to that channel um, only. Um, so please like and subscribe to that channel or subscribe to that channel and watch and like some videos on there as well. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.